Our next presenter, um, representing the Vilmont Water Treatment Technology Platform, is Professor Lingam Pele. my great disappointment at the poor communication from the organizing committee. Is uh, Adila around? Yes. If I had been informed that there was free wine, I would have been here at least two hours earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, secondly, may I get the title? <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, I misread the initial email. I thought it was five minutes per slide. I've subsequently. <laughs> okay, water resilience, what are we talking about? Renewal, reuse, recycle. That's essentially it. To do this, we need a fundamental change of mindset. We need policies, etc. But at the end of the day, we need technologies that can enable us to implement this in an economically viable manner. So for the next couple of minutes, I'm going to share with you something that we have developed that can hopefully contribute to the three R's. The Wurmland's water purification microfilter, quite a mouthful. What exactly is it? Um, a South African developed microfiltration technology platform, and I'll explain the platform a bit later. Water treatment with no chemicals, no additional energy whatsoever. High product quality, extremely robust, extremely to operate, clean and clean, that sort of stuff. Ideal, and this is a critical thing, ideal for small scale and decentralized treatment and reuse. Not depend on someone else to do it for you, do it for yourself. Myriad applications in the three yards. Uh, that's the microfilter, one is before, one is after, I'll leave it up to you to figure out which one it is. Why am I here today? This is an excellent, attractive opportunity for investment. It's a phenomenal opportunity. Is anyone here from the Western Cape government? <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking about let's do things differently, let's start addressing the issues. Keep your ears open to this. <laughs> I'm going to talk about two completely different products that we developed from this. The first product does not have a major relevance to the Western Cape, but it was our primary product that I put my energy into. Safe water provision for remote rural areas. This is the reality in about a quarter of South Africa and probably about a quarter of the world. People go down to a river, a stream, a lake, collect 25 pieces of water in a bucket, take that back home and consume it. Quite often it's contaminated with E. coli, it's well, E. coli is actually not dangerous, but it's not very technical stuff. It results in diarrhea, cholera, etc., etc., etc. There are tons of point of use water treatment systems on this planet. Seemingly, none of them have a major uptake. What is our offering? The Woodamount water treatment system. Deceptively simple. Operation pour water into the thing, put three drops of chlorine. Jip into a five meter container and collect the water. Flow rate starts off at 20 liters per hour and might increase to about 50 liters per hour thereafter. In other words, way beyond anything that's on the market at present. Cleaning, simple, just brush the thing. And that happens once every week to once every four weeks. This granny claims that she should take this kid to a clinic every single week for diarrhea treatment. And a month and a half after implementing this, the clinic called her to find out what happened. Did the kid pass on? She just didn't have to do with that. We implemented 1,025 units in the Popo and Eastern Cape thus far. Phenomenal uptake by users. They're currently being used for up to two years. Used among municipalities, significantly more attractive than current commercial alternatives. Market. So Africa alone has a 500,000 unit minimum market. 
add on a 300 rands markup per unit that tells you what you're talking about. However, we talk about the African Asia market. Phenomenal opportunity to address service delivery and opportunity for investment. But this is not what I came here to tell you about. What I came to tell you about is the next one. Backwash water recovery. If you have a pool, you pump it through a sand filter to clean up most things. Except if anyone put over there. Not much you can do about that. In reality, the pool filter gets backwashed. And all of that water gets sent out to the drain. So, following on from the previous project, my previous professor, Billy Simon, reached up and said, can't you adapt that to actually try and recover pool backwash water recovery? It's very simple. Instead of that backwash water going down the drain, take it out to a JoJo tank. Challenge was develop a filter that will allow that to filter under gravity back into the pool. So you're talking here about complete recovery of the backwash water without any chemicals, energy, or any regular manual. Simple as that. Periodically, you need to clean that by simply brushing it, like I showed you in the earlier one, and discard that stuff to use some other time. To get to the chase, we have a tier sponsored project. That's why, it, sorry, I'm going to run out. Oh, sorry. That's what it is. I just like to conclude on this. Numbers, large pools, a backwash is 60,000 liters per backwash. I didn't believe this, it's been calculated. So it costs about 15,000 rands per month in terms of water, 20,000, 23,000 rands per month for a typical pool. Potential water savings with this device, 99%, pay about six months. That's the potential market. What do we have? We already have two, uh, two significant products. There's a whole load of things we've been asked to do following on from this. What we require at this stage is business partners and product demand. If the Western Cape government starts doing some numbers on your pools at present, you'll know this. That's our bunch. This hasn't happened overnight, it's happened over. Uh, Still, we can have to leave the rest of this. I do apologize. Judges, questions? Yeah. So, I mean, there, there obviously are products at the moment where in terms of backwash, and so you, you put stuff in a, a holding tank. I think one of the disadvantages of it at the moment, though, is that you have to let it settle for at least 24 hours. So you have to kind of fill it up so you need quite big space for that. Is this technology then saying that you pump your backwash water straight in there, and then over a, a short period of time it will filter back into the pool? Uh, clean. I mean, is that is that? Exactly. Look at the competitors. It's coagulation population, which we just referred to. That's the one side. You've got cartridge filters, which are non-replaceable, and at the other, uh, other side, you've got micro commercial microfiltration, ultrafiltration units, which are expensive. This one here gets rid of all of those. So the water just goes into a tank, goes via a filter, back into the pool. So you might backwash arbitrarily for half an hour. It might take you a day for the water to filter back. There's no input from anyone whatsoever. But this has been already demonstrated at Paul Rose's it's, gym. It's, it's a completely different space from what exists previously. I had to rush through the slide. We've done the scans on Australia, the US, and parts of Europe in terms of competitors. There actually isn't anything that exists before. And just let's say, what is the cost for that? Because we didn't get quite the cost for that system. Okay. The, I mentioned a cost of 23,000 rands per month as current pool costs in terms of water, etc. The payback period for that, in our worst case scenario, will be about six months. In practice, we are not going to sell these units. We will actually provide the service because that's more lucrative to good amounts than selling the units itself. So, if you want a number, that unit that I showed you just now that I walked through, because he talked to me. <laughs> will provide a thousand liters per hour of clean water, and that will cost approximately 15,000 rands. What we require is the investment to mass producers to drop the price point quite significantly and break into the international markets, which currently have no competitors. 
last question. Um, for your rural water treatment um, um, product, can you tell me about the water quality standards that you're meeting? Have you? I mean, obviously, that's very important. That is critical to the entire thing. Before we put any units into the field, we sent the units to CSIR for evaluation. Now, as a matter of interest, these were challenged with E. coli counts of up to 300,000 CFU plumbum. So, complete safe water at the end. I must point out that it's not just the filter alone. It's the filter plus the three drops of disinfectant. Because the filter pulls all the, all the colloids, all, everything else, and the five more drops of disinfectant to it. Hence, compared to almost any point of view system on the planet at present, uh, it seems, according to the CSR, that we're doing fairly well. Last one. What's the lifespan like of the filter? And how's the maintenance? The lifespan has been about five years, but there's an important political point here regarding the rural water filters. Okay? If you put in rural water filters and tell people this is going to last you six years, there's a very high probability they will reject it up front. Because in South Africa, whenever there's an election, the councillor says, I will give you piped drinking water within two years. Hence, one needs to look at the sociology of this. If you tell someone this is going to last for six years, there could be a response that, ah, if we use this, we're not going to get the piped water that was promised by someone else. Hence, we've taken the conservative route and said, four years, we know you're going to get piped water. Use this until you get piped water to take care of your kids. So it's actually more a political answer than a technological answer. I must apologize for that. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. Right.